Hello, my children, and welcome back to another harrowing episode of He Did What to this game? Now, the more eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed that there is something immediately wrong with the image before you. One of these things is not like the others. One of these things just does not belong. Now, it is standard YouTube policy under Section 12, Subsection G7 that I am to tease the best part of this video at the start and then not elaborate further until the end of the video in order to maximize ad revenue. But nah, let, let's just do this. You guys can just assume that I spent six months coding and animating to make this happen, and I'll just assume that you want to see me shoot stuff. Let's go. Oh no. And so now you know what Dark Souls would look like if it was made by an American development team. But I hope you weren't under the impression this was all I had in store for you today. No, 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 no. But before we get into that, ad time. Look at this poor, unhealthy dude. This dude is your average gamer who drinks terrible sugar-filled energy drinks all day long. This awful habit has made all of his skin come off, and now he's just bones. But watch what happens when I give him a now drink instead. Wowzers! Now he's maximum over healthy. He can run at up to 80 miles per hour and can swing this two ton metal hammer as if it weighed nothing at all. And would you look at that, he's also bulletproof. That's a pretty potent potion if I do say so myself. And the best part is that now you too can use modding tools to make yourself invincible in a video game by heading over to nowdrinks.com and using the promo code INFERNOPLUS at checkout for a free shaker. So next time you invade a gang squad, you can just take a quickie sippy of that pineapple twist and then utterly decimate them with your powerful dance moves. Link in the description, and now back to the video. Alrighty, so before we get into the incredibly cursed stuff in this mod, I'm going to take a moment here to talk more about guns, particularly about how they work. To start, you may have noticed that these guns have custom animations. What you may not have noticed is that every single one of them has its own individual set of custom animations. This is because Halo's guns are all sorts of different shapes and sizes, and there is no one-size-fits-all solution to make this work as every single one of these guns is held with a different grip or in its own unique position. So after a few weeks of learning about animation control rigs and inverse kinematics, I then began the process of adding over 100 new animations to the game. Yes, this mod has over 100 custom animations in it now. Some of you might think that is gratuitous. And you would be right. The next thing to bring up is the mechanics of the guns themselves. This is not some half-assed model swap where I just made a hacky crossbow that looks like a gun. Guns in this mod are implemented as a completely new category of weapon, with its own controls and mechanics. This was achieved through an absolutely massive amount of ESD coding and tweaks. ESD is effectively the state machine that controls every character in this game. It determines how players act and interact within the game world. Everything from hit stuns to grab attack to move sets to even rolling is controlled by the ESD. And for those of you who are wondering, ESD stands for suffering. This is what ESD editing looks like. Here is the state that controls rolling with a one-handed weapon. And this specific condition right here leads to a rolling attack. Very clear and concise. Absolutely no existential dread that will cause you to wake up screaming every night for the next three years because you forgot a single condition in Active State 177. Good. Now let's move on. Visual effects. Something that I spent a lot of time on was making visual effects for these guns. There's a ton of detail that honestly was entirely unnecessary for me to implement, 
but I did. Would anyone have been mad at me if the needler needles didn't stick into surfaces and detonate? Probably not. But they do, and it looks pretty rad. It's just too bad that this cost me one seventh of my soul to make it happen. The Dark Souls effect format is called FFX, which stands for. <coughs> These FFX files are editable thanks to a tool created by Meow Meredith that can convert the data into an XML format. It's just rather unfortunate that we don't have a key for that data. So almost every single field in the FFX file is just listed as unknown or unk. So how did I make custom effects if we don't know what the fields in these files actually do? Come on, I, I dare you to guess, leave a comment. Indeed, that is correct, sacrificing the blood of the innocents in service to the Dark Lord Miyazaki. Or you know, we could have just worked it out through cross-referencing different files and making estimates about values in their possible ranges. With a healthy dose of pure trial and error guesswork. Something like that. And also, just to prove that I'm not making any of this up, here's the XML for the battle rifle muzzle flash. This field here at the top is the main effect ID, which is used to spawn this effect. After that is a bunch of initializer junk until we get to our first action call node that actually does something. This particular action call node defines the small, slightly darker sparks that fly off the muzzle flash. These little bad boys right here. These two fields in yellow control the number of sparks spawned when the effect is created. And the green field controls the maximum duration that these sparks are alive for. These purple fields here control the size and scale over time, and down here these sequences control the red, blue, and green color as well as the alpha transparency modulated over time. And at the bottom here we have two child action call nodes. These are a bit less clear, but I believe the purple one controls the initial transformation and orientation of this part of the effect, and the pink one controls the initial velocity of the spark when it is spawned. And there you go, all of that just for a single spark. And this mod has over 150 custom visual effects in it, with about a third of them being made specifically for guns. So now we just have one more topic to talk about here, but unfortunately things tend to get worse before they get better. So let's talk about sound. Dark Souls uses FMOD for sound, and some Chad modders have actually recreated the FMOD projects for the game in such a way that they can be loaded, edited, and compiled with official tools. This is actually really, really cool, and it works super well on the remaster. Unfortunately, building sound banks for the original PTDE version of the game has some serious issues that no one has yet to solve. But I did find a rather ridiculous workaround. Compiling sound banks that contain new sounds is not possible, but compiling sound banks that contain modified versions of the original sounds is. So all I had to do was find every unused sound effect in the game, painstakingly map out all of the files and IDs, and then replace those unused sounds with the sounds that I actually wanted to add. And the result was this text file that maps out every single one of these replaced sounds. Because without this mapping, I would have absolutely no idea what any of these files actually are anymore. And this works perfectly. Well, um, besides this one little quirky detail. On every single map in this mod, there is an invisible area with three invisible cut content enemies loaded on it, which are just there to make sure that the unused sound effects are actually loaded into memory. And that pretty much summarizes about three months of work in just a couple of minutes. I hope I was able to adequately express the level of exasperation and internal suffering that developing this mod has put me through. I'd also like to go ahead and thank some people who helped share in my pain during this development as well. Metal Crow, who has been unbelievably helpful with many things in this mod, and most notably he saved my ass by fixing the janky aiming camera for ranged weapons. Scott Chocolate for helping teach me the basics of animation rigs and inverse kinematics, which is something I've always wanted to learn, but I've never had the mind to just sit down and figure it out. Mail Meredith for like a dozen different things. Dude is a legend, and if you have a dime to spare, toss it in his direction. And of course, Crestfallen Warrior for letting me test my guns on him. And now for something completely different. So far, all I've done is focus on guns, guns, and more guns. But honestly, they only make up a tiny fraction of this mod's content. It would be impossible for me to cover every tiny little thing that's been added, so I'm just going to pick out the most interesting bits and talk about those. Let's start with the maps. Arena Plus had three maps in the original release of this mod. Now it has 13. I don't really have a punchline for this, it was just a lot of work, and th that's all I got. Now you might think that adding 10 more maps would mean that I'd let the quality slip. But no, the new maps are way more detailed and better optimized than the originals. In fact, you might even say that they now have 16 times the detail. 
The final map I added to this mod is actually the culmination of everything I've learned while working with this game engine. It's beautifully lit and shaded and packed with little details that very few players will ever notice. Well, that is unless I blatantly point them out in this video. Another interesting map that I added was Death Island. This map is stupid huge. So stupid huge that it's basically unplayable. It effectively requires 16 people to play. So what kind of psychopath would spend dozens of hours working on a map like this, knowing that it might not ever even get played? Another map that got added was Dropoff's port of Crossfire. It's kind of neat that the mod that initially inspired me is now a part of Remastist. And Crossfire actually has a unique mechanic that I explicitly designed to make it play better. This map is covered in railings that heavily limit the player's movement options, so I introduced a mantling system specifically for this map. And yeah, I could have just deleted the railings instead of going through all that work, but we do not negotiate with terrorists on this channel. And speaking of movement options, do you guys ever feel like gravity in Dark Souls is just way too strong? Have you ever just wanted to leap into the air like a majestic turkey and parkour your way through the game? Then why not try out the Squirrel Ring? It lets you do a janky super jump so that you can channel your inner Sekiro as you accidentally jump out of bounds and fall through the ground. There are at least 50 different ways you could break the game by jumping into places you aren't supposed to be with this ring. But that's nothing compared to the unfathomable game-breaking power of this next spell. Soul Vault. Yep, I really did put this in the mod. I don't even think I can classify this as a sorcery. It's, it's more like a giant bug that has somehow taken the appearance of a spell. The only thing I know for certain is that you could probably do a really cool speedrun with this. Next up on the list of terrible additions to the game is Special Attacks. I thought it would be cool to put a new spin on some old classics, like the Scimitar. And a scythe that is not actually a scythe, but is just called scythe. And my personal favorite, the Gargoyle's Helicopter. You see, it's funny because its rotational energy is exceptional. Hey, do any of you guys remember that Daddy Limit video with the exploding kicks meme? Because I made that into a real thing. I also added a giant laser cannon to the Moonlight Butterfly Horn, which is perfectly balanced and not exploitable at all. I've also reworked most of the Catalyst weapon arts to make them more diverse and, uh, kind of silly in some cases. I, I call this one Dark Coom. I'm cooming! I've also added a variety of new spells to the game, like Dark Weapon and Projected Heal. But of all the spells I've added, the award for spell that the balance testers hated the most has to go to Vanish. A spell that makes you completely invisible for six seconds but at the cost of taking triple damage while it is active. Surprise, motherfucker! And I guess since we're on the subject of magic, let's talk about Purple Miracles. Throughout all of the Souls games, we only get two of them, and it's just not fair. So I designed a few more velka theme Miracles with some really unique effects. First up is Intervention, which places down a circle that explodes if an enemy walks too close to it, effectively a faith-powered landmine. Next is Karmic Reflection, which is a debuff spell that causes healing effects to be reversed. That's right, you can now die from drinking Estus. This is truly the Dark Souls of Dark Souls. And for our grand finale, we have Martyrdom. It does exactly what you think it does. Now, some of you guys might think that I'm neglecting melee users here with all this magic nonsense, but do not fret, for I have brought the greatest gift of all. In vanilla Dark Souls, the left trigger and left bumper are both assigned to block when two-handing a weapon. I've always felt like this was a waste of space in the moveset, so I fixed it. And boy oh, it was not a simple task to do that. So to summarize a ton of work really quickly, I have essentially expanded the moveset for every weapon in the game. Many weapons now have a two-handed parry as an option, while other weapons have received a special attack. And yes, I did in fact bring super parries to Dark Souls 1. 
I hope you guys enjoy flexing on people with the Great Club. Next up, I want to talk about ranged weapons, because they have received a ton of cool changes. Bows and crossbows in vanilla Dark Souls were borderline unusable. They were slow, clunky, inaccurate, and did pretty pathetic damage. But now they actually are really solid weapons. I even did a full playthrough with a short bow during testing and had a ton of fun with it. One of the most important changes is the aiming camera. It's now more centered on the bow itself, giving you a more accurate view of your shots. Crossbows have been changed to allow movement during reloading, and if you are two-handing them, you can freely move while shooting as well. And most importantly, I've added a variety of new bolt and arrow types that have spicy new effects. Sniper bolts and feathered arrows actually deal increased damage the longer they fly, making long-distance sniping a more rewarding playstyle. Blunt bolts are a special bolt with very low damage but cause heavy knockback, and can actually be used to parry players exactly like how guns work in Bloodborne. Parrying someone with these bolts is essentially the stupidest flex of all time. Moonlight arrows now penetrate straight through walls, allowing you to make Giga Brain Joseph plays. Splintering bolts are basically shotgun rounds for a crossbow, and despite my attempts to make it not OP, it kind of ended up being Dark B2 Crossbow Edition. And lastly, fire arrows now have a cute little AoE. Alrighty, now it is time for the lightning round. I'm just gonna read off some random lines from the patch notes. Weapon infusions now have unique effects like lifesteal and weight reduction. The point down emote is now parryable. Miyazaki has been added to the game. Dragon form is no longer horrible. The stick has been added to the game. Whips can now headshot. The patch squat has been added as an emote. The ultra-secret boss fight with Master Chief has been removed. Over 100 new pieces of armor have been added to the game, thanks to the hard work of Dropoff, Xenthos, and Nordgaren. And finally, the Well What Is It emote is now repostable. Alright, so now it's time for the big one, the two words that 90% of you have been waiting for. Oh yeah baby, it's here, remastered compatibility. Thanks to the hard work of many people in the community, we now have a version of the mod that is compatible with Dark Souls Remastered. So if you're interested in doing some 9v9 whip-only capture the flag on Death Island, come join our Discord and hang out in the Remastus chat. This is where the community for the mod is settled and they host arena matches multiple times a week that are free for anyone to join. Links in the description. And also, another quick aside, for those of you who are wondering if having guns in the game will make it really unbalanced, don't worry. Guns are completely optional and disabled by default. If you don't want to use them, or you don't want to have players invade you with them, then you can just leave it off. That is, if you guys are even able to find them. All 13 guns are expertly hidden throughout Lordran, and I'm only going to give you two hints. There is one gun on every map, and you can obtain the first gun before you leave the asylum. I'm very curious to see how long it takes the community to find them all, so good luck, and I'm placing my bets on at least two weeks. And now for the final bit of the video, I'm going to drag some other Souls YouTubers into this accursed mod and get their initial reactions to it. <laughs> Just walked right into the shotgun. <laughs> it's okay, we're together now. Good day, good day. I'm going in. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that, was a, that was a nice try. Alright, all right, so uh, um, somebody point down at me right now. Oh no. Uh, oh no, why did they also point down? Okay! Oh, <laughs> oh my god! Wait, wow. <laughs> point down no. is terrible in this mod. This is no! Wait, 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 Wow, what is that? What is that on my screen? I'm seeing <laughs> This is fucking great. This mod is just great. I love this. This is actually fun to play too. Oh, fuck, 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 You keep joking about how, like, broken it is, but it's, it's actually yeah, amazing. It's, like, incredibly, like, unbelievably cursed, but it's also, like, really just a treat to play as well. 
this just a part of it? One of the testers on the first time seeing this, what he told me was, it's like one of those meme videos that's like a bunch of games mashed together. <laughs> it's a real. actually a real one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Why did I spawn that? Oh, I got him! Truth. Truth. Holy shit, yeah, long truth. range! Truth. Got him! <laughs> oh my god, the fucking long range sticky. I stuck you from across the map, That's insane, dude. that would be sicker than in Halo. <laughs> I'm coming for you! No, just no, just, it's just a prank! It's just a prank! No, no, please! Right, no, 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 fight. no, 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 Oh my god. Alright, boy. Rematch. Round two. Uh, I'm on low health, though. So let's go. <laughs> oh, first shot! Baby, oh yeah! Oh god, help me! <laughs> Jesus! Alright, you guys want to play the, the, the absolutely most cursed map? Yeah! yeah. Yes! Alright. So go to Death Island. Once Death you get uh, once you get back to Firelink. I hope you guys are ready uh, to do some jogging. Oh no! Uh, I'm ready. It's uh, the entire uh, map. <laughs> it's the Whoa. entire map. Fuck off! It's actually the entire island. <laughs> what the fuck? From the fucking <laughs> player. Are there cars? Oh my god! Uh, There's no cars. What no. the fuck? <laughs> no. I'm going for a jog, boy. See you later. I'm literally just gonna go in the ocean, just walk out in the ocean. Wait. Grenade! Oh shit! Oh yeah, baby! Oh shit, I did so much damage. I'm gonna flank them from the front. I'm gonna push Scott forever. <laughs> <laughs> My sniper's not fucking. Oh come on, got the tank up, Bravo, come on. I'll cover you. Hope you know where he's going in front because I'm the fucking cook. sniper guy. I, I know where I'm going, yeah. <laughs> oh no! I spent I spent like ten hours editing this model. I know exactly where we're going. <laughs> I think our teammate's down there actually. Hold on. Yeah, he's all by himself. The past like two minutes, I feel bad for him. Get him! Yeah, get him! Oh! Oh, oh this is big guy. I got him. I got him. Though. You flanked. We're going to the oh, oh shit! I love oh, the fuck out of it. Get the fuck out of it. Get the fuck out of You cannot leave. Oh, you can't leave. No! I'm going to leave. Hey, fuck out of it. And that just about wraps things up. For now. There quite possibly may be another video coming very soon. A video containing something very... Sus. But that is a topic for another day. So keep an eye out for that in the next few weeks, and if you're interested in playing the mod, there is a link in the description for both the download and our Discord. So have a wonderful day, and don't forget to reload your battle rifle.